I changed a little bit the, the title of the talk uh, because of the suggestions of the uh, referees. Uh, so we changed a little bit the scope of our, our paper, well, abstract. Um, so, okay, so this talk is about the simulation of living systems. Uh, specifically, it's about the modeling genes uh, interacting with themselves. So it's a joint work with Carlos Gershenson and Hyobin Kim from Universidad Nacional Autónoma de México. Uh, so th this is the outline of the talk. So uh, I will say a few words about gene regulation. Uh, then I will, I will uh, very briefly review uh, these two models of gene regulation. And then we, uh, I will explain how we test the model performance uh, using the entropy. Okay, so what is the genome? So for us, a genome is just a sequence of, uh, well, genes. Here are represented by these blocks. Uh, and we assume that uh, we can we can uh, perform a, a single measurement uh, in each of these blocks, or, or also we can perform a joint measurement on all of these blocks at the same time. Uh, and we ob uh, what we obtain is is uh, what is uh, what the te technical term is uh, the gene expression of of, of the of the block or uh, so. This, this is an example of a binary state of gene expression. So in this example, the, the first gene is expressed, the second one is not expressed, and so on. Uh, so I'm, I'm representing uh, uh, that the gene is expressed with the color red and gene is not expressed with the color black. So this could be another, another uh, state. So we would like to, uh, to understand this behavior. So now, the, in, in real life, the states of uh, gene expression uh, are affected by the states of gene expression of other genes in the genome. Uh, of course, I mean, it would be in, incredible if, if the state of a gene does not depend on other genes. Uh, so these interdependencies give rise to a network-like structure uh, of this, uh, similar to this. Um, here, uh, the regulation of a gene uh, is, is represented by, by arrows. So here genes again are these blocks and arrows represent regulatory influence from the, from us, from the source, uh, which is called the regulator to let's say the target, which is the regulated gene. Um, so again, uh, we can perform these joint measurements. Uh, and we would like to, to explain this, this behavior, this, this changing patterns of activity. So, uh, well, it is well known that the random Boolean networks uh, developed, well, introduced by Kaufman in 1969 are uh, minimalistic, but very effective models uh, of these uh, genetic regulatory networks. Uh, and here, these uh, FUSI networks that we are uh, going to talk about are extension of these Kaufman uh, models, where we have uh, multi-valued genes, not just binary genes. But uh, first of all, uh, let, let us re recall the definition of a Boolean network. So these are the uh, these are just uh, bool uh, the symbols that I use to denote the Boolean operations. So this wedge, this uh, funny V, and this uh, dash denote the uh, operations of conjunction or AND, disjunction, which is the OR, and the negation, which is not. Uh, so these are like the, the, the basic uh, circuit engineering uh, gates. Um, and and this, uh, these operations, which are the building blocks of, of larger uh, Boolean functions, uh, are uh, represented in, in this way. Uh, well, it, it, they, they can be represented in many ways, but these are a useful way because it's a, a canonical representation, these truth tables. So, um, okay, so here is the truth table of, of the not uh, or negation. Uh, here is the truth table of the and and the or. Uh, okay, so I, I will, I will, say that uh, what is a Boolean network or a random Boolean network with this example. Uh, so a random Boolean network consists of an influence diagram like this one, which the, with, uh, where the nodes represent uh, genes in the, in, in the genome. Uh, and uh, 
this influence diagram specifies the, the regulators for each gene. And additionally to this, we also have uh, truth tables. Uh, and these truth tables specify the type of regulation uh, that is going on. So again, here we have this example of the state, this binary state. Uh, but we would like to, to give, given a, so for given a state, a binary state, we would like to, to compute what's the, what's the next state. So uh, for each gene, how, how can we do that? For each gene, for example, here at gene one, we look at the regulators, which is uh, node gene five and gene seven. Uh, we look at the, at the color or the value here. It, uh, so, so the first, the first regulator of one, the value is one, and the, the second regulator of, of one, its, uh, its value is zero. This is black. So then we go to the to the true table and see that the the if the input variables take the value zero one as uh, sorry one zero as as it is here, uh, then the next uh, the next value of of that gene would be zero, which is this. So here we have the, the, this state. We apply the, the first function and, and we get this state. And we do the same for all the genes in the network. And in that way, we, we, we get a new binary state, uh, which, uh, yeah, which represents the, the gene expression. Okay, so this is, this is the, the colors for the next state. Okay, so now, what if we want to consider more than uh, two values of gene expression? So in this, in this particular picture, or in this example, more values uh, of gene expression would represent more colors here. So in the, in the, in the previous picture, we have only two colors, uh, black and, and red representing zero and one. Here we have more colors, green, uh, orange, blue, representing other, other, uh, other, uh, real number between zero and one. Um, so how, how, how can we do that? How can we extend this? Because a Boolean function is not defined for, for entries uh, in, that are not zero or one. So in order to do this, uh, we, we, we go to, to the FUSI logic. So we extend interpretation of, of the Boolean operations to real numbers between zero and one. And uh, here is the, the and of x and y and and here's the or of x and y and here's the not of x and depending on on our choice we can uh, interpret the this this uh, conjunction as the minimum of the two values or as the maximum of zero and x plus y minus one or as the product which is kind of the most natural maybe way but anyway uh, and the, and the, okay, what it's important here is that negation is the same for all of them Okay, so in, in changing the, the, the interpretation of these symbols, we can uh, get, um, well, we can extend the, the, the domain of these Boolean operations. Um, so, okay, so the, the, the key tool to, to extend this to a full Boolean function is to use the disjunctive nor normal form of the Boolean function, uh, which uh, very roughly it says that uh, Every every Boolean function can be uh, written as a disjunction of conjunctions. So this big uh, this is a big disjunction, a big or uh, of of uh, a lot of ands, and and this uh, this conjunction um, is uh, taking these terms, which can be either a variable or its negation. Uh, so. Okay, so FUSI logic adds more truth values. That's the, that's the intuition. We don't have only zero and one. We, only, we don't have only truth and false, but we have more uh, intermediate uh, truth values. And we regard them, uh, these, these intermediate truth values as degrees of gene expression. So now we can, we can say that the gene uh, is, is expressed to a certain degree, let's say. Or, so this is useful uh, to re for when one wants to reason about uh, uncertainty, uh, while uh, we want to preserve the logical interpretation of the basic operations. So in this example, now this, this function, uh, we see that now uh, 
by choosing uh, one of these three uh, FUSI logics, uh, it's, it's now uh, well defined. So that, that's uh, where the FUSI logic comes into play. And now uh, I, will, I will explain how, to, how we test the model uh, performance. So we measure the entropy on a, on a series of states. So here I have uh, one, two, three, four states uh, of gene expression. Each column represents a gene, a single gene. So we have seven genes. In, uh, the first state is at the top, the last state is at the bottom. So at the in the first uh, state, all the genes are not expressed. And then in the next state, the first gene is expressed, the second gene remains uh, not expressed, and so on. Uh, so here I'm, I'm again uh, making this identification. Uh, I, I, I represent zero, uh, well, as black and one as red. Um, so here I'm explaining only the binary case, but this can be extended to the to the multi-value or FUSI case. So what we do is um, we count first the, the occurrences of a, of a given color uh, if, uh, in, in, uh, for each column. Uh, and with that, we, we, we get a relative frequency. So we take the number of blocks with color black, let's say, in the, in the first column, and we, we count them, it's three, and then we divide it by the size of the column, which is four. So then the probability of, of observing a black uh, box here is just uh, three-fourths. Uh, and in this way, we, we compute all these uh, probabilities and uh, we calculate the entropy for, for, every, for every column. Uh, here is an example of for, for the fourth column. So for gene number four, the probability of black is equal to the probability of red, uh, which is one half. Uh, so, the, and here is the, the just the entropy. So the now uh, this is the this is entropy defined for for a single node or a single gene. Now to 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 compute the entropy of the whole network, we simply take the average entropy of all the individual genes um, and define the complexity as, the, as four times the entropy times one minus the entropy. So the intuition behind this is that, a, well, it, from the biological point of view, is that age measures how flexibly the information of gene expression is changed. Uh, so high uh, values of age means that the entropy is changing a lot. So, sorry, the gene expression is changing a lot. Uh, the complement one minus H measures how stably the information is maintained. So a large value of one minus H means that the, that the gene expression doesn't change a lot. Uh, and in that way, C can be regarded as a metric to assess the balance between the flexibility, flexibility and stability of the cell functions. Um, so we did some simulations for, uh, these are for networks with uh, 15 genes. In the x-axis, uh, we, we vary the number of different values of gene expression. So Boolean networks would correspond to, to, the, to the x equal two here. Uh, we also vary the, the, the number of regulators each uh, gene can have from one up to four. And we, we vary also the choice of FUSI logic operations. Um, so here we can see that the entropy is highest for, for, the, for Boolean networks in all the cases. Uh, Gedel, Gedel uh, operations have, have ups and downs at uh, even and odd uh, values of gene expression. Uh, and Lukasevich has the, has the more stable uh, behavior here. So that's why, why we 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 try we will try to consider it in a further study. So this is the summary of, of the talk. Uh, random fusion networks uh, model gene regulation with multi-value genes, not just binary states, as the uh, traditional Kaufman model. Uh, the choice of fusion logic is also a parameter of the model. 
the entropy and complexity, uh, we, we propose them and use them as a proxy to measure the, the performance of the model. Uh, and uh, yeah, we see that the random fuzzy network with Lukasevich operations are more stable performers across the range of all the, all the gene expression. So that's, that's it, thank you. Thanks so much. This was great. Um, so, so quite a few people walked in just as you started speaking. So for anyone who just joined, um, you can raise your hand. We'll have a short Q&A at the end of every talk, or you can also post in the chat. I see Hiroki right now has his hands up. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. So the quick question. So among the, those three different ways to fuzzify the yes. Boolean operation, so can you make this, uh, you know, guess what, which one would be most meaningful from the biological perspective by using any kind of criteria? Uh, yeah. yeah, no, no, to, to be honest, I don't have any intuition uh, from the biological uh, point of view. Uh, my choice, of, or well, our choice of these, uh, these three types of fuzzy logics was just because uh, there is a, a, a abstract theorem uh, that says that any, any type of uh, fuzzification of Boolean operations can be constructed as a combination of these three, uh, mm -hmm. if, if, yeah. if that makes any sense. So, so that's why we, we chose this. But, uh, but yeah, we, we still have to 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 understand better the the biological okay. interpretation of this. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. There was also a question in the chat. Um, if you could answer quickly, Yan Kim was asking if that method of measuring Shannon entropy implies the yeah. assumption that's a statement implies the assumption that all inputs are equally frequent. For a network uh, in an attractor, that maximum uh, entropy assumption does not apply. Inputs only come from within the attractor. Did you look into restricting states accordingly? Uh, yeah, no, okay, sorry. Maybe I, I didn't explain this, how, uh, this very well. What we did is to, uh, uh, well, of course we did, a, 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 we, we analyzed ensembles of networks. Uh, for each ensemble, we let we, we choose uh, one one thousand random initial states, and from those one thousand initial states, we let the the, the system evolve for uh, one thousand steps. Then we throw away those first one thousand steps uh, just to uh, try to, to to force convergence, and then uh, we we take another one thousand steps, and on, in those steps, in we is is where we measure the the Shannon entropy. So, so it's true that maybe when you are inside an, an attractor, uh, uh, maybe this this uh, this cannot really tell you. Uh, 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 yeah. Okay. It, 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 I think it's also related to a question I had, but it might be worth following up on Slack or or in the Zoom okay. uh, later. We're out of time, but thank you so much for your time. Yeah. This was great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So we can we can move on to our um, second speaker for the session. Ian Holmes will be presenting on CA simulation of R 